All right, third video lecture for chapter one here. Corresponds to the section in your textbook on microbes and humans. <clears throat> All right, I've got another slide here just to remind us, I'm going to keep harping on this, many microorganisms out there are beneficial. Uh, only a minority of microbes are actually pathogens. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, just because some, a microorganism is a pathogen for some other living thing, it doesn't mean it's a pathogen for us. These pathogenic microbes are very specific about their hosts, where they're going to cause disease. And, and certainly later in the class, we'll be talking a whole lot more about what it takes for a microorganism to cause disease and then how, how our bodies naturally fight those organisms as well as things that we can do to help our bodies along through giving, through, through taking various types of antimicrobial drugs. All right, and again, um, many microbes, it's becoming more and more and more clear to us that um, many of the microorganisms that live on and inside our bodies in huge numbers, remember we've already talked about how uh, in terms of total number of cells, individual cells, there are 10 times as many microbe cells on and inside our body as our own human cells, which is kind of hard to wrap your mind around. They're just much, much, much smaller than our cells. They live in very complex relationships with us. In many cases, they're protective. Uh, there are bacteria that live in your colon, your large intestine, that produce vitamins for you that we can't make ourselves and our body. And, uh, and we're learning more and more about this. Um, all of the different microorganisms that live on and inside our bodies are referred to as the human microbiome. That's kind of a newer term that's come along the last several years. Um, and so there's a lot of interest right now in trying to identify what are all these microbes. We don't even know what they all are yet. And what are they doing there? Are they are they not really harming us? Are they helping us in any way? A lot of these relationships seem to be very complex. There's a lot of research going on in this area. It's called the Human Microbiome Project. And you will, you know, now that you're learning about this, if you haven't noticed already, there are every once in a while articles in the news about things like um, the, the bacteria that live in your intestinal tract may influence whether you have a tendency to put on weight easily or they may be influencing whether you're more likely to develop type 2 diabetes or there are even people who think the the microbes in your intestinal tract are somehow influencing what's going on in the, the brain so they may play roles in various types of brain conditions. A lot of that's very new information and it's kind of difficult to, to wrap our minds around. So there's going to be a lot of interesting research in that area. All right, then biotechnology, this is a hot area these days, and we actually, we hear a lot about this in the news. Biotechnology is basically uh, taking advantage of biology in various ways to advance human health uh, and technology, food production, et cetera. And so there are lots of different example categories of this. Biotechnology can be used for food production. So, and you guys probably know that things like yogurt and cheese and so forth are made using microorganisms. They're very involved in those processes. And uh, beer and wine are, are kind of some among some of the earliest examples of biotechnology. Now, more recently, uh, over the past 40 years or so, we've developed skills in genetic engineering where we can take a gene, a piece of DNA from one living thing and move it over into a different living thing and give that different living thing a new trait that it didn't have before. That's genetic engineering. And that's where GMOs, we hear about these GMOs in the news all the time. And, uh, you know, again, how many of you guys, uh, I asked you before how many of you had a kind of a negative impression of microorganisms or E. coli, I think was the one. And, um, how about GMOs? You hear about these. There are a lot of people out there today who are uh, very adamant about, I'm not going to eat anything that's genetically modified. You know, I don't want any of those types of things in, in my diet. And um, unfortunately, there's kind of a throw the baby out with the bathwater thing going on there. Um, there are genetic modification can include things like, okay, so you've got a, a yam, a tropical root type vegetable 
that is a source of cheap to grow and a good source of nutrition in poverty-stricken parts of the world. Well, what if you can use genetic engineering to make those yams more drought resistant so they're more likely to survive in poor parts of the world where there are irregular rainfall patterns? And, you know, to me, the pros of that far, far, far outweigh any potential cons from having manipulated genetically that sweet potato in the laboratory. So I want to caution you, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of false information out there, there's a lot of sensationalism out there about things like genetic modified organisms, and so hopefully as you go through this class and your other science classes, uh, you'll begin to look at things with a little bit more of a skeptical eye and not believe everything that you, you hear about uh, things like GMOs and uh, vaccinations. That's another, that I'm going to be getting on my soapbox about vaccinations in this class, I can guarantee you. All right, bioremediation. That is using microorganisms to help clean up environmental problems. Like remember the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico uh, several years ago. Uh, it turned out there were naturally occurring bacteria in the Gulf of Mexico that were able to digest most of that oil spill. So most of it cleaned up a lot faster than, than um, what we initially thought. So maybe we'll be able to use, use those bacteria deliberately down the road as a means for cleaning up the environment. There also are microorganisms that may be useful for, for cleaning up and digesting other types of toxic chemicals like in toxic waste dumps or even radiation. So that's another very hot area of biotechnology as well as bioremediation using microbes to help clean up the environment. All right, this is a table from your textbook and I just wanted to point this out to you. Um, in a class like this, this class is going to be geared toward you guys who are planning to go into healthcare careers because that's where the majority of you guys are headed. So we've already, I've already said many times, most microorganisms don't make us sick, but we are going to focus in in this class on the ones that can. And um, as of right now, we know of about 2,000 types of microbes that can cause human disease. But keep in mind, uh, in the very first video lecture I mentioned, there are probably in the billions of numbers of different microbial species that exist on the planet. And so out of those billions, about 2,000 are capable of making us sick. So again, it's just a small fraction. This is an interesting table to me because it's comparing top causes of death in the United States versus the world. So take a look at this. Take a look at the numbers. And you know, what do you notice that's different about top causes of death in the United States versus worldwide? Um, the causes of death that are are triggered by microbes are highlighted for you in red. So, you know, the black ones here, black text indicates things that are not caused by microorganisms. So in the United States, you get, you get down to number eight or number 10 before you have um, microbes being responsible for uh, causes of death in the United States. And I really want to point this one out to you. Number 10, septicemia. That means a bloodstream infection. And guess what? Most of those infections occur in patients who are already in a hospital, already in a nursing home, um, some type of healthcare facility. They don't typically have those infections before they enter the hospital. That's a huge, huge problem in healthcare that we'll talk about in this class. But worldwide, uh, respiratory infections, the number four cause of death around the world, HIV AIDS, number seven. Uh, diarrheal diseases. You don't hear about people in the United States dying of diarrhea very frequently, but around the world, you get into poverty-stricken areas where you have poor health care. Um, lots of children still die from diarrhea. Tuberculosis is caused by a type of bacteria. And yes, we have cases of tuberculosis in the United States, but worldwide there are still quite a few of them. It's uh, still the tenth leading cause of death around the world. So, um, and tuberculosis is sometimes considered to be the most successful pathogen, human pathogen that's, that's out there because it's been documented for thousands of years. So that's an interesting thing to take a look at. And it all goes back to the healthcare 
system and you know living in a in a wealthy country like the United States where we have lots of privileges and good health care the we don't have nearly as many deaths caused by microorganisms here as when you go worldwide and start taking a look at the the entire world and, and consider all of the the poor countries that are out there all right so be sure you read through that section in your textbook as well. Uh, the next video lecture we're going to talk, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on history of microorganisms in this particular course. Uh, traditionally there was a whole section in an introductory micro course about history and we're just going to hit some of the highlights because this is we don't have time in, in this class and with our healthcare emphasis to uh, spend a lot of time on microbiology history. But we will hit some of the important highlights in the next video lecture.